Good afternoon. I'm Paul Gentle. Um, I'm Director of Programmes at the Leadership Foundation. I'm delighted to be introducing this afternoon Professor Tara Dean uh, for her talk, The Art of Research Leadership. Please welcome Tara to her stimulating talk. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you all today. Having been a researcher almost all my career and having a lifelong love of the arts, choosing the topic was in fact the easy part, the art of research leadership. Naturally, I have my own views, but being a researcher, I couldn't really resist doing a piece of research myself. So I wrote to every PVC and provost for research and enterprise, research and innovation in the country, and ask them two simple questions. Firstly, in your opinion, what is the art of research leadership? Do you think this is different to leadership generally, and if so, how? What I am going to share with you is the collective views of myself and other leaders, and I'm going to use the medium of the visual art to do so and share with you some of my own favorite paintings. In fact, research leaders do have a lot in common with leaders generally. To start with, you need to have a strategic vision. Whether you are leading a small research team or you have an institution-wide research leadership, vision is absolutely key. I really do subscribe to a very old Russian saying that Good leaders dream our dreams better than we do ourselves. So it's important that this dream is understood and the vision is shared. The painting that really depicts this beautifully for me is Raft of Medusa, here. The vision is to get over there. There is a clear imperative to do so. Almost everybody has signed up to this vision, although perhaps not this chap. And I'm not too sure if uh, this is what happens if you don't sign up to this mission. <laughs> you need to also be adept in planning. And when it comes to planning, the guy in the center of this painting, for me, was a masterful planner. Very hard to beat. You need to be brave as a leader, and you need to face external political environment very bravely. One painting captures this very well for me, and that is 3rd of May by Francisco Goya, a wonderful painting. Of course, you need to be a convincing communicator. Sometimes this is mistaken by being a charismatic communicator. I think charisma certainly helps, but for me, the most powerful of communicators are those who can actually communicate the most complex of issues in a very simple way. And I think Norman Rockwell has captured this very well in his painting of freedom of speech, where an ordinary man is standing up and communicating very clearly to all those around him. Of course, as a leader, you need to be able to take risks. And when it comes to risk, one painting does it for me all the time and that is Turner's painting of snowstorm. Because you need to want to go out there when nobody else necessarily wants to, as a leader. You need to be an effective networker. After all, this is one of the reasons many of us are here today. And this painting, I thought, captured this very well. Although I do like to bring your attention to how there are very few women in this gathering. And I'm pleased that things have progressed a bit since the 19th century. So these are some of the common characteristics. I'm not going to dwell on all of them. So if these are some of the common features, what is different? What makes research leadership different to leadership generally? Well, to start with, you need to have passion, oodles of passion. You need to believe unconvincingly on the power and contribution of research to the society. Now, I did try very hard to select a suitable painting which depicts this that I could share with you in an afternoon session. I couldn't, really. So what I am going to share with you is a painting
something that kind of evokes that sort of emotion in me every time. And that is the ceiling of Sistine Chapel. Michelangelo was a sculptor. This is his first fresco painting. It took him four years to do so. You must have passion for the final product, otherwise you couldn't produce a masterpiece like this. So passion for research is absolutely vital for any research leader. Research is almost part of the very academic identity. So a research leader needs to understand the intensity of the relationship which exists between a researcher and the research. Secondly, you need to have a standing in research yourself. So you need to have had achievement and recognition by your own peers. But there lies a tension. The bigger your research leadership is, the more likely you are that you have to sacrifice that research and subject of specialism yourself. So at times you do find yourself a bit of a loner. You've had your own journey, your own difficult paths, but you're no longer part of the mass. A bit of a wanderer, captured beautifully by this iconic painting of the Romantic era. In fact, research leaders do have a lot in common with artists. Power of observation is key to both. Knowing that you can't see everything at first glance. You need to pay attention to detail. You need to look again. How better to demonstrate this by sharing with you a painting? So this is one of my favorite painters, Archimboldo, and a painting of a fruit basket at first glance. But then you look again. You look from different angles, and a second image appears. In both research and in the art, you deal with things from different perspectives. You deal with ambiguity. When it comes to ambiguity, one particular painting really every time does it for me, and that is Andrew White's painting of Christina's work. A very ambiguous painting in many fronts. At first glance, this looks to be a landscape painting of a rural scene, solitary figure, a young woman, in the middle, raising from the ground, possibly after a pleasant rest in the meadow-like surrounding. But actually, this is a painting of a paralyzed middle-aged woman who's been paralyzed since infancy, crawling towards her house. There are clues to that. If you look at her arms, there's quite a lot of muscle wasting in her arm. In fact, it was, I think, Claude Monet who said, it is on the strength of observation and reflection that one finds a way. So we must dig and then unceasingly. I think that's actually quite a good definition of what research is about. Imagine being the first person who discovered the world is not flat, or the sun is in the middle and the earth revolves around the sun, as opposed to other way around. Some of the individuals who promoted ideas like that risk their lives to do so. Now, Another key feature to research leadership is that of nurturing. One provost for research, in his response to me, he said his role is not to really direct anybody's uh, research in any personalized way, but to allow 4,000 flowers to bloom and for him to harvest a bouquet of flowers from this field of talents and then present them toward as a solution to the problems. Now, you may very well at this stage be waiting for sunflowers or irises. I'm afraid still life is not quite my thing, so I'm not going to share that with you. <laughs> what this particular provost told me very much resonates with a stewardship um, theory of leadership, focusing on longer-term outcomes through researchers' knowledge valuing their autonomy in a shared leadership environment in a very high trust environment. Now, I think there is a balance to be struck between this type of approach and shorter term, shorter output driven approach, which does govern more control and monitoring. Very well the balance is going to be, it very much depends on the maturity of the institution's research, but nurturing is key. Finally, research is an intensively creative activity. And when it comes to creativity, one painting, 
which happens to be in my top five favorite painting, from, shows this beautifully, I think. And that was the nurturing, sorry. This is the, paint, this is the creativity. He painted this 450 odd years ago, quite a while back. If this doesn't portray creativity, I'm not too sure what does. Now, a research leader needs to understand what motivates researchers and then provide them with an environment that they can be most productive at. This may sound as any other aspect, any other work. There is a key difference with research, and that is the unpredictability of the outcome. So the biggest challenge for a research leader is to manage research without stifling the creativity. I do hope I have managed to share some similarities and differences between research leadership and leadership generally with you while sharing some of my favorite paintings. Thank you.